Hello everybody, welcome back, Fun Player here. And yeah, today we're going to have a look on a very nice bike lock from Abus. Or this used to be very nice, it's quite beaten up by now. Um, it is the Abus Bordo 6500 with an X Plus core. And it's very common here in Germany to lock up um, high value bicycles like e-bikes or yeah, just pricey bike bikes. Um, it is a very solid um, make and physical attacks are a bit hard. I think you can split these nuts somehow, but not so easy. And also cutting is doable, but not so easy. But in my channel, we will focus on picking this thing without destroying it. And to give you more idea what it's inside this lock is, I want to take out another lock because for this one I don't have a key. I bought this very cheap from eBay without a key. And to give you an idea what the key looks like, I brought this lock. I cannot even fit it into the frame. Another bike lock, also with an X Plus core. And I've shown this in my video 78. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out now. Um, so this key works like this, very smooth. And once you turn it, you can open the lock, of course. So in, in these types of locks, we have discs that you have to rotate or the key has to rotate. And when you pick it, you have to rot then, rotate them by yourself. And this we do with a tool. For example, here I will be using the um, pick that Lock Picking Lawyer and Bosnian Bill developed for Sparrows, together with Sparrows. And this works very nice on these X plus cores because, um, yeah, if you know the terminology like front tensioning, back tensioning, and so on, um, the, the disc that is on the most outer part of the lock, like it sits here on the key, um, this is always a zero cut, and then you can tension off it very nicely, and you can open the lock like this. And we'll see that in a second. Um, what is special about the keys here? Well, um, here's a Coke card that you can take to locksmith and they can make you um, a copy of the key but just by the code. And if we look on the shape, you see here towards the tip, it is a bit angled. So you can insert it into very deep into the lock, into some disc locking mechanism. I will show you also once we disassemble the whole thing. And then you have here a cutout and we'll show you where this goes. This is also a measure to keep the key inside the lock once you have pushed it in and rotated it a bit. So we can only extract the key in the locked position. <clears throat> then you have the different cuts and different angles for the discs. And in these types of locks, we have only six discs that you have to set. And for this code, for example, you follow along, you have a three cut, then a two cut, then a three, another three, then a five, a two, and here's a six cut. Mm. And the six cut is not shown anymore in the code. So, so far to these keys, um, I'll set everything up now, and then we can have a look how this picks. So, see you back in a second. So, I want to take you along of, on all steps and one thing that you have to do first or which is more comfortable to do is remove this rubber here. This is just a, a shielding that you don't scratch up your bike and this goes very easily by just pulling it down a bit and on both sides it has some, yeah, latches in here that inter just slide under here and you can just pull it down a bit and then you have it free. So right now we are locked and what you have to do first is rotate all this as far clockwise as it goes but let me just insert it just a bit like this and now you will see I cannot rotate the discs and this is because of a disc locking mechanism. I think this is mostly to prevent yeah, just like accidentally um, 
turning of the disc when you move it with your bike or so because then you cannot insert the key fully and this is a problem of all these detainer locks but this this here prevents this and you can shake it as you want the disc won't turn what you have to do is you have to have a rotating tool that is a bit shaped like the tip of the key and this you can insert here just jiggle a bit and now I've rotated all the discs already. Just do it again. And now they are all set clockwise as far as they go in the direction we want to open the lock. And now we take the pick. I've set it up like to 10 discs or so, or 10 of these lines here. And then the tip is facing here. And what you have to do with the original tips actually to be able to navigate between the discs is you have to thin this pick a bit down because um, the spaces are quite tight. So let's insert it. Um, I have shown that here's just a, a weather shielding on, on the lock, but that does not disturb us in any way. You can just insert the pick through it. So Picking up the first disc, just make sure that you're really just on the first disc. I, I just pulled out the pick just a tiny bit and now I'm not tensioning anymore. So go back in and now I'm on the first disc. And yeah, maybe like this. So you see my red line. I'm on the last disc now and applying rather heavy tension. And this feels like it is in a gate already. So I leave it here for the moment. Then pull out and try to feel where the next disc is. So this one, yeah, roughly here. And let's see, not in a gate, but binding. And now we are in a gate. So I will leave it just in a gate for now and go for the next disc. And this is also in a gate here. And these discs have true and false gates. I don't know at this point of the pick if this is a true gate or false gate. Um, I have to go through the stack once more at least to find out. where the true gates are. Okay, this one is binding quite good and I felt false gates and I think this should be a true gate maybe. So the feedback is getting better now, now that I've set more discs into a gate. And now I'm a bit stuck between discs so I have to pull on the picking tip a bit to get out there and Turn also the pick because sometimes you're in a bad angle and this is already the up, outermost disc and this feels like it's in a true gate already or oh, I just moved it just a tiny bit so let's see this one feels very good and for true gates I always feel for the edges so I just bounce a pick on both sides of the gates and for example here this feels okay but not perfect the also the angle is not so large but i will leave that for the moment because the feedback is not perfect let's go for this disc first yeah much wider so let's go back here Okay, this feels definitely like a false gate, so let's move that a bit. Okay, I have much more movement now and it feels much better. So let's proceed. Okay, this one here. No. 
this is a false gate definitely. Okay, now in true gate. And I've had some core movement. Let's go up again. Okay, not so sure about this one. I think we will come back to this one later. Where are we? Okay, this is a false gate. Now the feedback is getting so strong that I'm stuck in a false gate. So I have to release the tension or even counter rotate a bit with the pick so I can get out of this false gate. Okay, let's see if I made it. No, still here. Okay, looks better. Okay, that's worse. Let's see. Ah, I think we open. Yes, nice. Okay, so I want to take you along for the full ride, gutting it, and maybe I will also re reassemble it. So what you do is, first of all, um, here's the locking mechanism. Now you have access to it, just take something flat and put push out this plastic piece here. Mm. Now you see the locking me mechanism from here and this just interacts here with, with this one. If it is like this, the, uh, this can slide out. If it's turned by 90 degrees, it's locked. So I can now just unscrew it here. And now the core can come out. I think best is just grabbing it with a tweezer. And it went out almost all the way, but not fully. So here's a FD drill protection. And you can see how, how thick that is. Um, and I will also take out the Weather shielding just two two sliders and two springs that can go flying easily. I've lost them a couple of times. And I am missing oh there it is. This is just a, a spring to keep the um, the drill protection in place. And here you can just extract the core from its housing um, by pushing from the back side. And before we completely do that, let's have a look. So we see one sidebar here and another sidebar here. And this is just the rotation limiter. And this is uh, the main sidebar that you have to, um, yeah, that needs to be retracted and therefore you need to turn the discs so it can fall into the core. And this one um, is retracted only when the lock is locked up. So when all discs are in a rest position basically. And this is important for a reassembly later. But first let's take out the core and I will push on both sidebars to not lose them. Here's the, the housing with the sidebar slot at the top. And here's a cutout for the rotation limiter. So let's put this main away. 
leave. And first of all, we'll drop the large sidebar and then also the small one. And you see that all the gates are aligned nicely. So if I push on one or so, then you can see it's not aligned anymore. Uh, let's rotate one, whatever. That's okay. And you see that the cutout disappears, yeah. So we just dropped something. This is a little sponge that sits down here. I think this is just to absorb more the vibrations. Mm. So how do you get it apart now? Um, here are two clamps holding the whole thing together. And you can just use a flat screwdriver, a small one. Just lift it up carefully, not bend it too much. And they can go flying. I've lost, almost lost one of them earlier today when I gutted it. Um, and now be careful, um, because if you lose the last clamp, the whole this stack can fall out. And we don't want that. So just like this. And let's first have a look at the disk locking mechanism. This is what it looks like. And if the top of the key inserted like this, um, you see that the springs are compressed. No, 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 no. Don't, don't. And sensation is freed up. Yeah, just this wheel. I will use the wheel assembles in a second. So this is like in, in rest position. And if you insert the key, this goes here. And this one just goes like this. And only then you can turn the disk. Of course, these um, prongs here go into these cutout block body up here and here. And so imagine if there's one in there, you can turn it into one. So you have to press something in there. Okay, welcome back from fast forward. Sorry, I don't want to make the video too long. I will skip the boring parts. And yeah, let me show you the discs. So in total we have eight discs, but only six of them. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one are actually code discs. And the other ones are all zero cuts. Like this one, the one you tension off. This one is before this thing, I'll show you in a second. And this one is behind this thing. So, um, let's have a look at one of the discs, for example. And so this is a zero cut. This means, um, you have to rotate it as far as possible. You see these rotation limiters here in the core. You have to rotate it as far as possible to align the true gate with the sidebar. And if you lock it back up like this, you align this this gate here for the rotation limiter, which will, will become half in reassemble, it makes more sense. 
Um, so this is one of the code card discs and let's have a closer look at this one. So this one you only have to turn just a bit. So if you see the sidebar on top, there's still quite some space towards the rotation limiters, right? And what is nice on the way is you have false gate on both sides. Do you see these small notches there? These are enough to catch the sidebar and throw you off while picking. Um, very nicely made. This one, how far do we have to turn this one? You see the rotation limiters. It is rather similar, probably. Yeah, you have to turn it a bit more. And also the, the false gates are on on the right side of the true gate. Do you see these cutouts? Yeah, these can irritate you quite a lot. And yeah, the other discs, this one, you have to turn, I think. It's here in the rotation limiter when we start picking and you have to rotate it back quite a bit. Yeah, so these are the discs. And then there's one thing that I want to show you. Um, all the spacers are the same. They're very thin, so your picking tip needs to be as thin as these spacers to be able to navigate between the discs. And then there's this thing. <coughs> which is um, a profiled spacer and this sits between this disc and this disc and yeah um, you don't need to go with your pick in this area because yeah these are anyhow at a set position if you do it right because when you set all the discs to here you should also be able to set these two discs and can I actually do that with my tool? Let's check. possible and I think it this is also the way I must have done it because yeah otherwise it doesn't make sense so it's important that your tool is somewhat shaped like the, the original key then you don't need to pick these otherwise you have to go down here and rotate them but that's a bit tricky because of the, the profile mm. Yeah, but I think normally people don't need to set this. Okay, so let me fill up the disk stack and then I'll guide you through reassemble because that's a bit tricky. So fast forward here and see you back in a second. Okay, welcome back from fast forward. I just put in the whole disk stack and then put the disk locking mechanism back onto it and the clamps back into position. And I already rotated all disks so the sidebar can go in there. <coughs> oh, I'm 
sorry, allergies. And this thicker sidebar rotation limiter um, is now sticking out of the core. And I found that for reassemble, actually, it is best to rotate all this back and um, yeah, have the sidebar sticking out. So now the sidebar cannot go in, but you can see now here a groove appears and this rotation limiter is actually disappearing. And now still the sponge, which is a bit annoying, but yeah, I don't know which way it goes, maybe like this. Then you have to find the slot for the sidebar, which is here just in the top of the picture. And you see here is the, the, the space for the rotation limiter. And now you're, um, since the sidebar is sticking out, you have to insert the lock, uh, the whole thing here with the sidebar sticking out. And you can insert it only until here. And then you see that the rotation limiter or the, no, the disc locking mechanism is in the way. So you need to use something thin to push that in like a screwdriver or so. And not drop everything. And just push it in a bit. <coughs> and then orientate your cami mechanism um, like this. So these clamps are here and it should be sliding in now. And yeah, so maybe you heard a small click. You can see the disc locking mechanism here sticking out. On this side, it's spring loaded, I can push it. And also here, the other side of the disc locking mechanism. And what this also does is now everything is compact and won't drop, which is quite nice. So now we can put this spring back in here, which is just for the drill protection, which goes in here. And now the weather proving just goes on top of it, just like this. And now we can get the lock body back. And you see here, there's a small fin or yeah, ridge. And this goes in here. So you have to rotate the lock like this. Best is not to tilt it like this because this might drop. Just like this. And then you can push it in. And at the bottom you should be able, oh, sorry. You should be able to insert the screw now. Yeah, you see this one is aligned. I can simply insert the screw. And now it's assembled back again. Still, we can push this one on top, this plastic piece, and this just goes carefully in here, pushing it in. And if you want to, you can put the rubber back on just like that. And the lock is reassembled. Now if I want to lock it back up, I have to pick it. Or if you have a key, it's easier. So yeah, this is all I have on this Bordeaux 6500 with the X plus core. And yeah, I hope you liked this video. Um, if you like these longer videos with reassembly and so on, 
let me know in the comments for sure if you're still here <laughs> so yeah i hope to see you in the next video if you like this please subscribe and leave a like leave a comment see you in the next video bye